Alright, good morning. Um, gonna get beaten up. Ow! <laughs> right, so we're back on the little lake. Very different now. Um, obviously, different time of year, different tactics. Uh, but we're off the mark. I'll talk you through what's been going on. Whoa, what's been going on? If this fish ever calms down, <laughs> not one of the bigger ones, but they're all welcoming conditions like this. <laughs> so yeah, tactics have changed. Things have changed on here. We have had, we have had the big one out, the real big one out, not so long ago. Um, I'll just say yeah, we'll talk you through everything in a little bit, so catch up with you in a bit. Right, good morning. Um, just had that fish and uh, yeah, need to get a rod back out there. So, what date are we on at the moment, lads? I know it's November. <laughs> so it's the 18th of November now. And uh, yeah, obviously with this lake, like any lake, things are gonna change. And they have done on here. Um, one of the main things that's, uh, that's changed for us as anglers is the bait options of uh, change because obviously before we uh, we couldn't use anything but boiling pellet in the warmer months um, so now obviously with the colder months are here that means we can introduce things like you know I mean your typical thing is to use maggots isn't it uh, I haven't gone down that road I've gone down the road of casters to be honest with you and I can tell you this lake's been fishing moody as anything. I haven't been here for a little while and I've uh, managed to bag one. Um, now last night we had, so yesterday it's been, look the weather's been awful, you know it's been really really wet. I don't mind telling you I nearly lost, nearly pranged the car trying to get in here um, and the, the lake has not been fishing well. We had rain all night and I've got it this morning um, just before seven o'clock, just before first light. The rain had stopped and it felt very, very mild. And when we mate Phil got up, um, I was looked at Phil and I said, it could happen this morning, you know. Tom came round, had the same conversation and sure enough, um, off, she, off she went, um, off a little spot that I've got near to an island. Um, but yeah, I'm going to get this rod back out, get it sorted. I think, well, are the bite windows going to be small? I don't know, I don't, is, is the honest answer. Um, but I, I kind of get the feeling that the bite windows ain't going to be too big at the moment. Although that could all flip on its head, especially with the new bait that I'm using, the slightly new approach, you know, the new feed. But yeah, I need to get this rod back out and I will catch up with you properly shortly. Right guys, so let's get a, uh, a leader knocked up with a solid bag on it ready to go um, now one thing i always do is start off with an overhand knot and that is just to you know just a loose one so i can take it out easily but that's just to stop the material slipping when i take out five inches of chain you know the material is not going to go past the knot um, so you'll get a true representation when you and when you know when you start your splice you will definitely have exactly five inches to play with um, one thing i always recommend is to start your splice with a uh, chain core actually alongside the chain by about 10 mil you know I've, what that's going to do is it's going to mean when you pass your splice back through it's going to exit alongside the chain rather than finishing in front of it um, and what that means is you know you'll get a really nice flat profile from where the chain finishes to where your splice sort of starts because it's all together you know what i mean rather than a flat spot between the chain and the splice so um, onto here a size 8 ring swivel is going on there um, we're going to be fishing this drop off 
Not for everybody, I know that, but um, for me, where on you know on a lake like this where bikes are few and far between, I would rather get rid of that lead, especially with a short rig and a relatively heavy lead. I just think it's a recipe for uh, you know for fish to throw the hook, and say so when bites are you know potentially one bite in 48 hours. Um, you really do need to do everything that you can to make sure that you're fishing effect as effectively as you can, as you can, you know. And uh, I think losing the lead is not a bad shout in this scenario. Worth mentioning is get yourself some sharper scissors than I've got, <laughs> because you'll be there all day trying to tidy things up. But yeah, as I say, we're going on. We're going on with the drop-off style. So just poking the swivel into the lead, running the leader across the top of it, and then uh, attaching it with a, with a uh, you know with a tail rubber tiger nut hook bait as i've mentioned before real fan of that in a bag just balanced out with a little bit of cork um it's not going to be wafting around everywhere you know there's still going to be quite a bit of presence to that hook bait but it's enough i think just to um just to encourage a you know just to encourage it to fly up if a fish comes down and takes a mouthful um you know just blobbed on as normal with a bit of floss there and we are pretty much ready to go now Load in the bagger. One thing that I do put a lot of um, emphasis on is the lead at one side and the hook bait on the other so that when it sits on the bottom, the lead is always going to be at the back of the bag and the hook bait is always going to be on top of the bag. You know, um, I just think it does it really make a difference. I don't know. But for me personally, in my head, it does, um, you know, so making sure everything's really, really tight, making sure the bag's nice and compact, making sure that you just take your time to, you know, shake all the pellets down, get it all nice and um, as neat and compact as you can. And then when you tape up, tape up, wrapping around down towards the bag. So that even that is tightening the bag up just a little bit more. Trim everything off, you know, make sure everything's nice and neat and you're pretty much ready to go. Um, just a case of getting it in there and hopefully waiting for a pickup, but we'll see. Right, well, uh, yeah, as I was saying earlier, after we were just sorting that fish out, uh, we are now mid November, well, yeah, 18th of November, and this lake has been fishing very moody. Uh, I did have some success. Um, well, I've had continued success really on here, but the one fish I was after I did have, and I'm really thrilled to have caught it, absolutely beautiful mirror. Uh, that was going back a couple of months now. And one thing that we've learned though, as the, as the season's gone on on here, is the fish are incredibly, incredibly spotty. And I do wonder whether that's um, part and parcel of small lakes. I mean, it might all be in my head, which often things are, but on a big lake where fish have got to move about freely, you know, they're traveling, often covering lots and lots of water, lots and lots of ground. You can imagine them being less choosy about where they feed because there's a lot more areas to feed, you know, in short. So I think on small lakes like this, it wouldn't surprise me, and thinking about my experience on other lakes, it wouldn't surprise me if, uh, we are in a scenario where the fish feed where they want to feed, uh, they're quite habitual, and that's what makes the fishing difficult. Also, there's a lot of natural food in here, so giving them something that they want to eat, given that the rules are boiling and pellet only in the warmer months, I think the fish get kind of used to that. That makes it a little bit tricky. But uh, the thing that I have brought into my armory and uh, it's actually my first year using them is bait boats. Now, I know what you're thinking, right? I know exactly what you're thinking. Why the hell would you use a bait boat on a water this small? Well, because I'm not the only one for a start and it's an edge. It's a real blooming edge because of the fact that the fish, now I've worked out a couple of spots. Um, I think, in my, so this will be in my last three sessions, this will be eight fish and you're doing well if you catch six fish a year on here. And that is down to being very, very spotty, I think, um, and using the boat to its advantage. Now, if no one was using boats on here, I wouldn't do it. The fact that they are, I would be an absolute idiot to, uh, you know, not to, not to make the most of the tools that are at my disposal. And to be totally honest with you, 
because I've steered away for, I'm not, I don't mind telling you, I was in the bait boat, bait boat bashing crew for a very, very long time. I mean, years. Um, and for someone who works in the angling trade, actually what I've always done is I've always fished, in, I've always got used to certain methods. So, you know, I spent a whole year on zigs, you know, um, I fished exclusively with solid bags, which I'm just coming back to now, actually. Lots of different things, lots of different rigs. I like to know and understand how how we use certain things in our fishing so that if I speak to a customer, if I speak to anybody, I can give them some, some honest advice. And the one thing that was not in my armoury, one bit, was these bait boats. So I am using them. <laughs> um, they have been a real edge. And I think, as I say, moving forward... I will continue to use them while these spots are going. The spots are very small, you know, so when I say very small, uh, I think they're actually carp, I think it's where the carp have been naturally feeding, looking at it, and you're talking about a couple of foot at best, yeah? Um, so that's what's going on. But with regard to the bait, as I say, it has changed. So now we are using... Uh, I'm using, basically, I'm keeping it really simple. Um, hemp, casters, and a tiger nut hook bait. Now, you might have seen, if anyone watched the quarry, that was, I, I popped the tiger nut in the bag on there. Something I used to do a lot years ago. Um, didn't work on there, but we were up against it on there. Yeah. And, um, yeah, sure enough, it's definitely working. So, in short, it's keeping everything tight. It's not giving them too much bait. We're not here to feed them. The, fe the fishery is fed really, really well. Um, and we are trying to go on the theory that the fish have been feeding. Once, they, once the boilers and the pellets aren't quite so effective, I mean, they won't be eating them all the time. They will be feeding on natural food. Um, then, uh, you know, I'm trying to incorporate that into the mix. And as I say, actually, I have put maggots in the mix. I've put just a handful. So I'm not actually fishing them on the on the uh, on the rig or anything like that it is predominantly hemp casters tiger nut bait and full of maggots over there for good measure um and we'll see how it goes there's one more fish really that i want out of here um a really nice big common <laughs> so that's what i'm hoping for and you know what i think you'll do well to find a bait a hook bait um better than a tiger nut for a big common in my experience so uh yeah, we'll see how it pans out. Um, got a few bits to do now. Say so it's uh, very, very wet, slippy and muddy. Uh, but yeah, we'll see how the session pans out. Keep you updated and uh, fingers crossed that big common turns up. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Right guys, so I thought I'd briefly talk to you about something new to Rig Locker uh, from our very good friends at J Precision. And this is the OP hook point protector. Now, honestly, it's, look, I'm biased, but I've used them all, we've used them all, you know, myself and Jamie, um, before developing this. And I've got to tell you, it was developed almost exclusively by Jamie, no chemicals or anything in here, um, and it will stop your hooks corroding like nothing else out there on the market. Now, the nice thing with these, they work for a start, it works, it works very, very well, but the nice thing is the application. So what you've got is, it's basically a pen, and all you're doing is, when you twist this at the top, the brush, you'll see the, the liquid taint the colour of the brush. Once that happens, you just lick it over your hooks, right? So it's dead easy to use. One coat, let it dry, maybe two coats, absolutely plenty. That'll last you, oh, I don't know. They could be out there for probably, you know, three, four days with absolutely no, zero corrosion on a, on a hand-sharpened hook. Um, they, Look, they will carry a slight bit of odour when you put the, uh, you know, you can smell the stuff 
when you, when you put it on there initially, but a couple of hours, right, the smell is completely gone. Um, I've been using this now for 12 months-ish, maybe not quite that long. Feels like it, it feels like about 12 months, it might not be quite that long, but um, I can tell you now, has not affected the fishing. Um, has, it's like on here, for example, where I am now, sometimes I'm leaving rigs out for two days, you know, the best part of two days. So I need to know that, you know, my hook points are gonna be protected and uh, this stuff definitely, definitely does that. So it's called OP, which is on point, you know, on point protection. Uh, be installed at the rig locker soon. So uh, have a look and you will not be disappointed with this stuff. Right guys, so update time. Um, I'll be honest with you, I'm sat here looking across the lake now thinking about all the weird and wonderful places I've been this year with me angling and uh, yeah, from, you know, thousands and thousands of acres, public lakes in France to little lakes like this. And uh, one thing's for sure, the fishing has been definitely been varied and actually on here, uh, we've had to vary our approach constantly over the year to keep the fish coming but one thing that's uh, definitely prominent is how spotty these fish are something I think I alluded to earlier now it's one of those scenarios where you know if you are chucking up to a bush and let's say you're a foot away from a bush and you know you're not going to get a bite but if you're a foot closer to the bush you could get a bite in 10 minutes now I think that's going on pretty much all over the lake with where they want to feed. Um, I'll give you an example. There's a spot over here underneath a willow tree where we've constantly seen fish crashing out um, all through the year. Now, we fished it. It's not just me who's fished it. I, I mean, the amount of rod hours that's been down there has been unreal. You know, like hundreds and hundreds of hours between us. Um, and I had a really good lead about down there to try and work out what was going on. And there is an area that is probably a foot, two and a half foot by two and a half foot. It's not, not very big. I don't think it's difficult to say that is definitely a little bit deeper and definitely a little bit firmer. And after all those rod hours of being in that zone, you get a drop pretty much everywhere under there. But there's one air, it's like a spot within a spot, if you like. And the first time I put a rig on there, I mean, it did take, I think the rig was out there for 30 odd hours. Um, but we did pick up a lovely, one of the ones, one of the other ones that I wanted, not a massive fish, but a beautiful scaly fish. Um, and that fell, fell victim to it. Now I'm sure if I wasn't right bang on the money with that rod, it wouldn't have happened. Same with the spot that I've got out over here. I mean, if we go back to when we did the original film, that was all placing rigs by hand and, you know, doing everything we could to um, get everything as bang on as we could do. And uh, very similar with the spot over there. And actually, right back in the early days of fishing on here, you know, right back at the start of the season, I can remember it was bitterly, bitterly cold. You know, we went down to minus two, but I still had a hunch because it's quite deep underneath the tree. I mean, this top area of the lake is slightly deeper to the bottom area of the lake where you saw us filming um, earlier on in the year. We're not talking a lot. You know, let's say on average, you've got five and a half, six foot up here, where on average, you've got three and a half, four foot down there, but that can make a difference this time of year. Um, and yeah, I did actually nick a, one of the target fish called Starburst and I punched a lead um, underneath the bush um, with a little three bait stringer on there and it went down with a crack now I've tried to hit that spot again a few times and uh, you kind of know that you're not bang on the money you know and you know when you are but it's difficult to get it bang on the money um, now I know that people have this is this you know this brings me on to the boat actually because I know that people are using boats on here and with things like that they are an edge and especially if you're competing against I mean look let's face it we're competing against other anglers so 
that is why primarily why the boat came into play now that particular area that particular spot over there now has done me eight fish I think it's eight fish including the big mirror which I dearly wanted out of here I'm almost gutted to have had it in my first year to be honest with you um, well you know as good as you can be um, because it would have been nice to, to have that fish to target but there is still um, another fish that I really really want which is a big common that it hasn't been out for a while you know quite some time um, now that things have changed with regards to the baits that we can use and everything um, I think I'm on the right track I think I'm on the right I've, you know I've got a hunch that he could slip up over there um, so as I said earlier we're being very 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 localised with what we're where we're placing the rigs the mix has changed and I'm now using a tiger nut hook bait um, hemp and casters so look I could go down the thing is like I say this place is boily and pellet only you know for the vast majority of the year now of course the fish are going to eat it they're fed on it but you just get that feeling that the minute you can um, you know when the rules change on here the minute you can switch it up and do something different um, you should do it because um, obviously it's something new to the fish it's almost like a new season for the fish isn't it as much as it is us so yeah I mean, that, that's basically what's been going on in a in, you know in a roundabout kind of a way and as I say um, I will not move this rod knowing from experience that the rod under the willow even though it took a very long time to get the bite last time it, it might you know it, it could do the same thing so that that rod isn't going to leave I'm here for 48 hours we're on the second day now um, sort of getting on for midday I'd have thought so I've got another 24 hours basically and I don't care if that rod stays out there the whole time I've got the OP hook point protector on there I know that I know that it isn't going to rust up I know that it's going to be fishing for me um, very very confident in the solid bag approach um, given that the fish are spotty given that they don't like you know in my experience they don't like moving too far and I can tell you when I started on here I was fishing it in, in a way that I was wanting the fish to come in and feed. I was trying to get them to move about from bait to bait, doing what that, that's how I like to fish, right? So um, I think it makes the fish a lot easier to catch, but I can tell you that every single time I put more bait in than I think I should, it absolutely killed it for me. That is not to say that there's time of the year, times of the year where it would work. I mean, if you think sort of post spawning when the fish are basically hanging themselves, um, you can't get enough of any bait in, but for the vast majority of the time and when you actually want to catch them I, I think they've got to be spotty one thing you could do is just fish the feed pellet um, I mean they're very good on here the fish are regularly fed and you can tell I mean you know some people don't like that because they think it can make the fishing more tricky that's not true I don't think that's true anyway I just think it think, means you've got to think outside the box carp have got to eat they're not being fed all the time every day by the owner you know so they've got to keep eating um, you've just got to find out how to catch them and as i say love them or hate them <laughs> the bait boat has come into its own um, especially on the spot that i originally cast to back in the early days where i nicked starburst um, and actually the spot under the willow tree to tell you the truth because it is a very very small spot so I will continue to use it. I'll continue to um, plug away and fingers crossed we might nick another bite. I'm actually quite confident that we're going to nick another bite. So uh, let's hope. And as I always say, keep everything crossed <laughs> that it's that big old common. Um, but we'll see. Anything's a bonus on here. But uh, yeah, I will update you again. And uh, yeah, fingers crossed. So we'll see. Who's going to hold your hand in the dark? Who's going to warm your cold, cold heart? Not me, it's not me. Not me, it's not me. Who's going to be there when you're breaking down? Who's going to fix you when I'm not around? Not me, it's not me. Not me, it's not me.
right, good morning. Um, it is probably just gone seven o'clock now. Absolutely biblical last night. It was uh, non-stop rain. Uh, did manage to bag another one, little small mirror, lovely little linear, um, definitely one for the future as they say. Um, but look, don't think it's fished. The fish haven't really been playing ball, so we did well to get a couple of fish out. Uh, but we have got to get a scoot on because one of the lads already got his van stuck yesterday. We had rain pretty much all night and we've got to try and get out of here somehow. <laughs> so yeah, wish us luck and um, yeah, good luck yourselves on the bank and I will catch up with you soon. Cheers. Dark.